because we would, I, like, we would like to issue an apology to because the I, of I, 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 I have the dumb and I can't count good. Uh, having said that, Dying Light is a very fun parkour zombie game. <laughs> the likes of so which. <laughs> you you ruined like, it! You sound like the creators of Dying Light have a gun to your dog. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a very expansive world. Uh, Dying Light is something you should definitely look into picking up, especially with its new expansion. Please buy Dying Light. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Number five. Number five. Uh, for me, it's my favorite Xbox One game of the year, Ori in the Blind Forest. Not what the bar was that high. Well, yeah. Uh, so, one of the best uh, Metroidvania-style games. Metroid. I like calling it Metroidvania. That's not a thing. I know. It annoys you, though. It does. So, it's the best Metroid-style game, game uh, on the system. It's beautifully... Uh, animated and drawn the story is very subtle and, and well told but it's for its cute uh, look it's deceptively difficult like over the top hard there's so many one shot deaths and they get around that by having a really uh, creative save system where you just press a button you can create a save anywhere um, but it's man that game was awesome finding everything the only downside i would say about the game is that at a certain point it cuts you off and you can't backtrack anymore and not being able to like explore is kind of bad for me mm -hmm. but you know this game was fun from start to finish and i love it it's true so chris a uh, number five wolfenstein the old blood um I didn't. I didn't pick up Wolfenstein: The New Order because I had been burned so bad by Wolfenstein. What are you doing? I realized there's like glitter everywhere on me. Oh my god, just glitter. Uh, the I, I take my hands off the table now. Uh, the Wolfenstein, uh, Wolfenstein that came out for the Xbox 360 really burned me, mm -hmm. so I didn't give the New Order a chance. So the old blood came out. I saw a couple of videos. I was and I figured, yeah, this this seems like what I want, and it's. It's such a throwback to the to the previous era of uh, of uh, first person shooters where you know there's armor and there's health pickups and there's insane weaponry. It doesn't matter how much you're carrying and your weapons are never degrading and there's just waves of zombies. There is nothing worse than degradable weapons. Yeah. To me. and you know it was it was a, it was a ton of fun and then you could play back through the old levels of Wolfenstein 3D with your new 3D character. Which made me Number four, I have. Batman Arkham Knight. So, what? Okay. So, Batman Arkham Knight. Man, this was a game that truly felt next gen. This was a game that you knew would not be able to run on the older systems. Uh, this was the first year that we got those kind of games. The games yeah. where you're like, this is why I bought a new system. This is what this is for. And as a huge fan of the Arkham franchise, I was very excited. This was Rocksteady's swan song for it, the finale of the franchise. Um, it, it, it ended up being very divisive with its uh, over-reliance of the Batmobile. First, everyone was really excited for it. I actually enjoyed it because I got pretty good at it, and I enjoyed the tank battles, even if they did get a little there, there were There were two that were very frustrating. The, the first tank boss. And the, uh, the tunnel. Yeah. The tunnel. It, it was almost unfairly difficult. And then the last one was just so aggressively easy. Like, it, it was weird. Like, the balance was very hard to get for the Batmobile. But scene. everything else about the game, from exploring and traversing Gotham, to the graphics, to just the the new abilities and equipment added into the battle system, the battles were just perfect, as always. Number four, I have Transformers Devastation. We talked about it last time. It's a love letter to fans of G1 Transformers. It has a ton of replayability, a ton of customizable weaponry, and it's got the fast-paced action and collectibles that you would expect from a platinum game, so it's pretty spectacular. Uh, number three. Yep. I've got Doken Battle. You're fucking kidding. <laughs> I just figure it's a good time. It's not a good... Talk about the fucking game. Chris! Bro, language. You're killing me. I, look, I need my Boo and my Frieza to pair up because then you get the Metamorphosis link chain and I heal. And in this world tournament battle, it's very important because your health carries over to the next round. All right, so yeah, that's my number three. Yeah. Chris, what's your number three? Number three, Until Dawn. We talked about it last time. Uh, it was a great little movie of a game that came out. Uh, it had very effective jump scares. It had a 
I had a really great story as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And I had a lot of fun. I played it a couple of times. And I think for you, it was really cool because you got to play it alongside your girlfriend. Like yeah. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a joint was, thing for you. It guys. was much better the second time around because of that joint experience. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, all right. Number two. Yeah. For me, just like last year with Witcher, uh, I mean, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition and Transistor, and major indie game and a major AAA game RPG, I couldn't decide which way to go. Mm -hmm. Transistor ended up winning out. Right. This year, I was in the same conundrum. An indie game I've been dying to play and been looking forward to and loved, and another AAA RPG. And this year, it got flipped. Unfortunately, the indie did not win out this year. So number two for me is Axiom Verge for the PlayStation 4. Mm -hmm. Other games, you could say, are Metroidvania-ish. Like Ori and the Blind Forest. Axiom Verge is a true love letter to the original Metroid. Everything from its NES-inspired, like graphical style to the layout but then it adds its own twist on it first you feel like it's just a true homage and love letter to metroid but then the glitch system works in and the the story kicks in and you start glitching yourself through walls and and you have the glitch gun and enemies take on different properties and it has the same pure exploration about it and the music oh my goodness it has been Ironically, since Transistor was the first game I bought a soundtrack for, mm -hmm. uh, this was the second. Number two, uh, Batman Arkham Knight. The Arkham formula still works, I think. Uh, the side missions are the best part. The Batmobile is divisive, but ultimately it rolls around to being pretty great. Um, yeah. Batman's pretty good. You know what game I'm surprised didn't make your list? Mm. Fallout 4. Well, it was there in November. Number one. Number one. But before that, Chris, let's recap. Sure. Shall we? Yes. Uh, all right. Number ten, Halo Guardians. Battlefront. Number nine, Life is Strange. Joking Battle. Number eight, Transformers Devastation. Saints Row 4, Get Out of Hell. Number seven, Intel Dawn. Dying Light. Pretty good, I guess. <laughs> Number six, Pokemon Pycross. Halo 5, Guardians. Number five, Ori and the Blind Forest. Wolfenstein, the Old Blood. Number four, Batman Arkham Knight. Transformers Devastation. Number three... Dragon Ball Z Doken Battle. Until Dawn. Number two, Axion Verge. Batman Arkham Knight. And number one, number one, Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. This game was so good, I can't even stand it. I dumped so much time into this game. It's unreal. Mm -hmm. um, I just... I. I love it. The story was so good. I love Geralt as a character. I love how your p path of upgrades dictates your play style, whether you go more potions, magic, or swords, or a blend of the three. I love that you, your choices uh, in the plot and who you romance and what you choose to say and who you ally with and everything have impact on one of the three endings you get. I love... The graphics, I love the expansive world. I love just how much content there is in it. And I, I love that the first expansion came out and would, had more content in it than most other full games by themselves. Um, I love that there's a second expansion coming out early next year that is gonna make 2016 me wanna make Witcher 3 a game of the year again. This, just, this was amazing and I loved every minute of it. The Witcher 3 was great. Hit me up with your number one, Chris. Number one, Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. Which blows my mind, because before Ground Zeroes last year, mm -hmm. you had never played a Metal Gear game. I had Now not. it's number one on your list. That makes me so happy. Well, here's here's what I realized when I, when I was thinking about my game of the year. is I, I pumped in about 50 hours into this game, and I didn't even blink. Like, it just, it just, it flowed through. And... The fact that I spent so much time and I didn't even realize I was spending that much time in it means something. Yeah, because you're always the one to notice how long something's taking. Oh, I do. Whether it's a movie or anything, you're yeah. like, man, this is going on, dragging on. Yeah, no, it breezed. It's, I don't know. Did it breeze? No. I can't, talk, I can't talk much about the story because I'm not a Metal Gear person. And I know that there are lots of stuff that I, I missed because of it. But I'll say that... The variety of landscapes, you know, the desert, the swamp, the urban locales, uh, they all play so beautifully. The reflex system, 
even if you make a boo, uh, an oops. <laughs> you were really about to say boo boo. Uh-huh. You even make a boo boo. You have like a split second to fix it, and I really appreciate that. I appreciate the amount of weaponry, the way way you can go in either guns blazing or you can go in super stealthy. You know, you have your dog, you have your horse, you have quiet, you have everything, and you have so many options on how you want to tackle missions. You know, and I appreciate that level of freedom so much. So that's our number ones. Yeah, it was. I little... find it funny that both of our number ones weren't on each other's list. Yeah, uh, I also want to say that um, I don't. I'm not real thrilled with Kiefer Sutherland as voice acting, just because he doesn't do enough of it. Yeah, I found that, that a lot of people said that was that if you didn't listen to the audio tapes, Big Boss didn't say anything. The, the problem with the audio tapes is like you get a lot of them, and then they're like an hour long to listen to all of them, and who has time for that? All right, well, uh, cool. Join us next time for a, a quick look at our top five disappointments and the games we wish we could have played. Indeed. I'm Matt. I'm Chris. We're the Nola Nerds. See you in 2016. Press F to pay respects. Press square to pay respects. <laughs>